Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you are figuring out who people are behind their masks, <laughs> um, I want to encourage you to uh, get your, get your, pick up your sandwiches, your box, your sandwich box. The far table closest to the driveway is veggie sandwich. The far table is veggie sandwich. The near table is turkey. So uh, please go ahead and help yourself to your box, and um, and and please touch the box you take or take the bus, box box you touch. Pardon my French. My dentures aren't holding up right now. And uh, also remember, this is a this is a a well distance event, and uh, we asked you to bring your masks. But those of you who uh, haven't. I will be gracious at this moment. <laughs> All right, so we will begin in a little bit, but we want you to know that you can go ahead. We will have a blessing for the food a little bit later as part of the program, but um, we want you to go ahead and grab your box uh, uh, so that you're ready for that. That'll happen into the program just a little bit after the beginning of the program. We'll, uh, we'll bless the meal. Uh, but uh, uh, we want you to go ahead and have your box with you. you don't, we don't want to dismiss you to get your box. We want you to be in place and ready to go. Is, is Paul taking care of you? Is Paul going to get yours for you? Yes. You guys, you guys, you guys are covered. Yeah. All right. Exciting, exciting. Veggie on this end, turkey on that end. There you go. There you go. Um, this is yours designated. Yes, yeah, designated. <laughs>
right. So I want to remind you to go ahead and pick up your sandwich box. The table closest to the driveway is veggie, and the boxes closer to the sanctuary are, to the sanctuary door, are turkey. So uh, please make yourself uh, at home. Water is on either table. Please take the box you touch. Remember to maintain appropriate distancing for your sake and the sake of others. That looks pretty appropriate for Steve and Mimi. <laughs> As you walk around this, uh, this afternoon, please be mindful. We have reported a, a lost hearing aid. So if you happen to see one as you're walking around, uh, please let me know or let Don know here up in the front to your left and my right. All right, looks like we found that hearing aid. Thank you for your help with that. We're about to begin, so I'd like to invite you to find a seat or a chair or a place. Just about ready to start. Good evening, everyone. We encourage you to find um, a seat. Uh, we ask that uh, we have, should have plenty of chairs, uh, six feet distance if you are not of the same household. Um, would like to keep it as safe as possible. There are quite a few of us uh, here are from a high risk category. We I want to stress again that safety is the foremost important priority for us um, today. But at the same time, we cannot um, help it but to see and to be drawn. There's so many people, I just want to, when I saw Betty, I, I, the first impulse was just pick her up and run with her and, and to um, somewhere lock her up in this church and never let her go again. Um, when we see each other, we feel that this church family that's been here, it's um, more than just a building with a bunch of people. It's truly a family. And today we're gathered together as a family. So in some ways, we're all members of one household. So let's, um, 
let's celebrate the life of someone who was tr who've been uh, truly uh, glued to this community. And um, I have uh, bittersweet emotions right now. And I'm going to start with the bitter part. When I came to the church, one of the first people um, who uh, greeted me here was Art. One of the first things he asked if I like to go fishing. And I said, I love fishing. He said, what kind of fishing pole you have? And I asked him, are there different kinds? He said, yes. I said, I don't know any kinds of fishing pole. He said, okay, what kind do you have? And I said, I have none. Then he looked at me. You know, he was about, what, five feet tall? But he looked at me, and I felt like a little, um, a little third grader in the principal's office. He had that look. He said, how do you like fishing if you don't even have a fishing pole? He said, I I'm, I'm, cannot do it, Pastor. I cannot let you to remain to be a liar. That sounds like art, right? <laughs> Tell me I'm on the right track. He said, and how are you going to do that? He said, I'm going to take you fishing. We're going to go fishing, and then you can tell that you have a fishing pole. We plan to go fishing, and then he got sick, and then I got sick, and then he got sick again, and then we all got sick. We never made it to that fishing trip. But about a year ago, Art came. He was already, I don't know how he was walking. He was, after his, um, after Adele was hospitalized, he lost a lot of weight. And we all know it. And I don't know how he was even getting to the church, they were, but they were coming every week. And I think they tried to time it when the, uh, when the wind blows this direction, they just opened the van and the wind just carry Art into the church. That's how light he was. When he was that weak, he was not thinking about himself. One day he came and he brought this fishing pole. And he said, we're going to go fishing one day. I want you to have it. And now the sweet part. We will go fishing together one day, all of us together. The theme for tonight is fishing for Jesus. And for, as I'm learning English language, mean, can mean two things. Fishing for as if looking for Jesus, or fishing for Jesus as if on behalf of Jesus we're going to do some fishing. Art has done both in his life. I received uh, messages on Facebook from people who knew him back in the 50s here in Riverside area and said they have the most wonderful memories of this great man. It means 60 years ago people still remember and that's how you measure the greatness of a human being, not by the number of years a person lives, but the number of years she or he is remembered. And the fact that there are so many of us today quite surprised us by the number of attendants. I feel like maybe we should start having memorial service every Sabbath morning now. That will boost our church attendance a bit. Or we just celebrate each other's lives. I want to read um, a little bit from Apostle Paul because he heard about our gathering today and, and he mailed me his message. And then I'm, I'm going to invite um, Pastor Todd Ross Spencer to come and pray with us. Is that okay, Pastor? Yeah? You good? I see you jumping on and rushing here. So. <laughs> Pastor Ross Spencer was begging me all week long on the phone, just 
keep calling me and texting me, can I please pray? No, I'm just, he, he didn't know he was praying until like 30 seconds ago. I appreciate it, Pastor. We're going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. Sisters and brothers, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of human beings who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the God's Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. With that hope, we're going to plan for that fishing trip. And while we do this, we gather to remember a great, great catcher of fish, Art Lizer. So we're going to celebrate his life. There are amazing things, amazing surprises set up. And I hope, I, I, I'm just so tempted to give you a few spoilers, but I won't. You'll find out amazing things. You've, not, you've known Art as a fisher, uh, fisherman. I knew him a person who likes trains. There are other things he tried. We'll find out. But for tonight, it's our memory alive. And we don't have to go and wait to bring those wonderful memories. So let's celebrate. Pastor Todd, would you open us in prayer, please? It's good to see you. Glad you're here. <laughs> I'm going to save my story for a little later. We're going to pray now and thank God for Art's life before we talk about Art behind his back. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for people like Art that lived in such a way that it impacted our lives. You always knew where you stood with art, and you always knew where art stood on things. In many ways, that reminds us of you. There was a strength in his character and a love in his heart that just broke through so many things. In many ways, it made life simple. It made friendship with him simple, and that made it good. We're so thankful for that. We're thankful for him. And we're thankful that this is simply a pause in that friendship. So as we celebrate him today, we also celebrate you in the life of people. We celebrate that you are living in each of us, impacting each other. And that that goes on and on and on. Generation after generation, century after century. Your good life inside of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blessing upon us through art from you. It's all in your name that we pray. And all God's people said. Thank you, Pastor Todd. Um, in just a minute, we're going to say a blessing uh, over the food. Um, but I see many of you have not yet picked up a box. So I want to remind you to do that now. Because uh, as we, we're going to be listening to a song here, um, Art had some, uh, some music that he really enjoyed. So this first piece uh, is just a closer walk with thee, and you're going to hear that style, and um, we will hear more stories about Art and his musicianship as the, as the evening progresses. But this will also give you a time to pick up a box 
and then I will follow the song with uh, blessing it as Art would have said a blessing. The family has, uh, uh, has a little uh, story behind that that they'll uh, encourage, but I will say the blessing as Art would, and then we'll, uh, we'll eat together and we'll share stories together. So I hope you came prepared with your stories, and uh, we will have microphones if you don't feel like coming forward uh, that can roam to you. And we have wipes to make sure that you're, uh, you're taken care of in that way as well. Listen now to Just a Closer Walk with Thee as you get your boxes if you don't have them yet. service, we will also hear another uh, musical selection by Pete Nichols, I mean, 
uh, something Nichols, Red Nichols and his Five Penny Band. So uh, another one of Art's favorites. So here is a, a prayer that you might have heard in the Lizer household. And so I would like you to, to bow your heads. It will be very Art-ish. <laughs> if I can say that in, in all. And I, I, will, I will fill in a few thank yous with permission of the family. But this is a very art. And since we have lots to be thankful for today, and we're in good moods, right? We're in good moods. Uh, we are going to say some thank yous. <laughs> As there might not have been some thank yous if art was in a rush. <laughs> All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for art. Thank you for his legacy. Thank you for his ministry, both here at Riverside Community Church, in his family, and in the community. Bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' sake, amen. Now, uh, for those of you who came in a little later, uh, over here to your left and my right, there are tables with memorabilia, of, uh, memorabilia about Art's life, the different things that he enjoyed. And you will learn a lot, maybe, or be reminded of something as you take the time. And I would encourage you to do that at some point during this evening. And if you like looking at the fountain, if you look into the fountain, you will be reminded of Art because we have clay koi fish floating in the fountain in his honor. That's a nice touch. Thank you, Della. Thank you and the family. So uh, that's uh, just, you know, Art's presence is everywhere. All right, this is the time for stories. This is the time for stories. And um, Jeff is going to help me with a mic, managing one of the mics. And uh, so I am I'm looking forward to hearing stories about art. Uh, and I would like you, as you s share your stories, please to identify yourself. We are streaming today uh, so that there's a copy for the family of our remarks. And, uh, and so identify yourself and maybe how you knew art and then share your story. Do I have someone who is ready to start? Yes, come, on, come along. Um, Jeff, uh, if you, Raf is here. You want to wipe that? No, wireless is fine. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to wipe down that mic for you, and then you're good to go. Wait. Is it turned on? Yeah, you go on. Here, let me see. It's on, so he's. Testing, testing, testing. No? It's on. Wipe. Yeah, why don't you go ahead until we figure out what's going on with that. Testing, okay. Um, my name is Rafi. I am rather new to this church. I've been coming here since, uh, let's see, 2000, maybe 16. Um, I met Wendy and well, I, I met Wendy back in San Pasquale years ago, but I re-met her and started coming to this church. And just recently, something very profound happened. Um, this was a couple of years ago, and it was in the time when Ordell lost her wedding ring. Do you remember that, Ordell? Okay. Um, we started frantically looking for this wedding ring everywhere. We could not find it. Manny. And Art whispered in my ear, he said, you know, he said, I'm not that worried about it. He said, I think I'm going to, I know exactly what the wedding ring looks like. I'm just going to put one in her drawer. This is the one. And she won't know the difference. <laughs> and I have never forgotten that. All right. Anyone else? All right, Johnny's coming.
Good afternoon, Riverside Community Church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, family. My condolences to you. You know, uh, I first met Art and Ardell when I came to this church in around 2004, 2003, and we got to talk and everything, and, and come to find out they were my brother's next door neighbor. And not only were they my brother's next door neighbor, they were his kids' godparents. You know, and and I grew up in the neighborhood where they where they live at. I grew up there and, and never met him. <laughs> never met him. I didn't meet him till the day that I came to Riverside Community Church. And I remember some conversations with Ordell about the kids, you know, and everything. And 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 it was so awesome that somebody outside of the family knew so much about him and that cared so much about him also. You know, uh, my brother and my sister-in-law and, and my nieces and nephew, they all send their love. They weren't able to come here today, but I am here today to represent them and not only for them, for myself. I love you, Ordell. Go ahead, Jeff. You can, you can just stand where you are. You can come forward. No, use the, use the hand. Use this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Jeff Cassidy. I was uh, a student here at the elementary school back in the day. Uh, actually, David and I started first grade back in the fall of 1970. And we went through eight years here at the elementary school. And we had a lot of good times together. Um, the, the memory that sticks out for me about Art Lizer was he, back in the late 70s, we used to have these uh, youth trips where we would go on either to a river or a lake and we would do water skiing. And I was not the most coordinated youngster. Uh, and it took, we had a number of different boats and, and boat operators and I tried uh, behind at least one or two others and it took me multiple, multiple times trying to get up on skis. And, and this wasn't slalom, this was two skis that I was trying to get up on. <laughs> and I was getting very frustrated and then I took a trip on Art's boat and I don't know what it was, he said like one sentence to me to describe what I needed to do to get up on skis. And I, hopefully I wrote down what he said somewhere, I don't remember it now. But I remember that he told me that, I got out behind the boat, and he took off and I popped up. And I was so proud that I was able to get up on skis, and so after that I enjoyed being on these river trips uh, much more. Now, I think the last time I saw Art was two or three years ago at a memorial service over at La Sierra. I wish I had taken the time at that point to thank him for how he helped me out then. I don't think I did, so I'm wanting to do that publicly now. But I, I, Art was a very important presence in our lives here at the Riverside Church and also for those of us who were in the youth group and, and which were often part of the uh, church school that we had over here. So I have many good memories of Art. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Another Jeff. Jeff, there's a, a hand right over there. Well, as Oradell has told those that I have met that don't, I do not know here, <laughs> Uh, our families go back a very long ways. Back to old Long Beach days, um, artwork for my dad. In fact, I think he drove the truck even to make deliveries. And uh, Grace worked for mom in the office and uh, Art loved my youngest brother, Larry, from the time he was a tiny baby. <laughs> And um, I guess he helped make up for some of the fact that I didn't want him. <laughs> I wanted a sister. And when they told me it was another boy, I said, stomp my foot on the steps of the Long Beach Church and said, 
take him back where he came from because he's not coming to live here. And Art carried him around on his shoulders until Larry got too big and then he pulled him in a wagon. And back a little further, I remember uh, I rode to school to Linwood with Art and George and uh, we had to wait one day <coughs> for uh, a while after school. And so when he came out, I said, well, what happened? And he says, uh, the name of the principal was Mr. Dart. And he said, we had to have a little Dart to Art talk. <laughs> and uh, I don't ever, I don't think he ever told us what it was about, but uh, you can put your own interpretation on that. And we were part of the group with us that my folks did not want us running the streets uh, of Long Beach during summer. And uh, we would go to camp meeting at Linwood. And then we would go to Herky Creek. People here know Herky Creek? Okay, well, Grandma stayed with us and Mom and Dad would bring up friends, and um, they would get the reading course books at camp meeting, and Grandma would read all of them for the different ages of us. And <laughs> Art had gone fishing over at Hemet Lake, and he had a little coffee can that he put worms in. And <laughs> he came back to <clears throat> camp, and we asked if he caught anything. He said, well, yeah, but he didn't think we'd really like what he caught. <coughs> and I must say, my grandmother was deathly afraid of snakes. And it somehow got out of the coffee can. And Grandma turned as white as a sheet, and Art did manage to catch it again and put it back in the coffee can. And then Grandma told him in no uncertain terms, you get that thing out of here now. So we love to play cards together, do puzzles. Um, we had a very, very active youth group at the Long Beach Church. And um, we had talked one time of having a get together, but as life got busy for all of us as it does, we never did, but we had a very active cohesive group at the Long Beach Church. I, um, <laughs> Ordell and I were talking a bit ago, I can't remember a time when they weren't part of our lives. Jeff, Jeff will get your microphone. Thank you very much. Wonderful, stories that go back. Uh, dart to art talk. I think I probably went through a few dart to art talks myself, but th just they didn't have a art in there. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? I, I know there's lots of stories in this room. Some of you know him from church. All right. Oh, good. Thank you. Please stand and I and say who you are and and then and how you know art, so we can hear your story. My name is Walt Lancaster, and uh, Art and I used to teach Sabbath school together here when I attended this church at one time. But as time went on, um, I became a single person, and um, my wife Karen and I, boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, fiancés, needed a place to uh, get married. Well, if you know anything about Adventist, you have to marry another Adventist. And I was marrying a Catholic. And this caused um, a lot of turmoil within my family and the church and so on, and we needed a place to get married. So I contacted Art, and Art said, I'll take care of it. So Art arranged for us to be married in this church. Amen. It took a Catholic priest, an Adventist pastor, and a Baptist pastor, all three of them on the platform, to make this happen. But it did. And it was compliments of Art that basically we were able to get married. And it wasn't too many years thereafter that she was baptized. Amen. All compliments of Art Lizer. Thank you. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I know I, I remember one of, the, one, of the, one of the things I remember about Art is that he was able to tell me uh, in rich detail about the history of the, the church and the, and the stained glass and how it was rescued from another church that had been, um, uh, was being torn down for the freeway interchange over here in downtown Riverside area. And uh, if you've never been on our campus, um, uh, please feel free. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I'm making the invitation without the <laughs> with the no, I can't let I can't I can't invite you in. OK, well, look at it from the outside for sure, um, because uh, you'll, you'll see And art shared all that detail and how as he uh, looked at the building as it was being built in the 70s and how it reminded him of the arc, uh, the length of the complex and the height uh, and uh, uh, I will always remember Art for his rich stories and the detail uh, that he carried with him. A lot of uh, generational wealth there. Does anybody else have a story that they would like to share, whether you worked with him or whether you went with church with him? Yes. I see a nice young gentleman here coming forward. Uh, and as you're thinking about your stories, remember that we all know Art differently than, than, uh, than his kids do. And his family does. And so even if you think your story is yeah, maybe insignificant, it adds to the, the rich tapestry that uh, the kids get to have as part of their, their memories of their dad through the experiences of how you experienced art. And so I want to encourage you, really, to, to think, and even if you don't share it publicly with us here, to make sure and share some of those things, because that adds that adds a great deal. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tim. I, I actually have a couple stories, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, go man, go on. I'm a little. <clears throat> Art was my fishing buddy, 15, 16 years. And we had a lot of interesting conversations. We didn't agree on everything, Ordell, you know that. <laughs> and there's times when we drove two hours to San Diego and we would argue, but we had a deal. As soon as, as, soon as we got down to the harbor, it was game on, we're gonna go fishing. But one of the times I, I remember is when I would go pick up Art, I would pick him up, if we're going to San Diego, I'd pick him up at 3 a.m. If we were going to Dana Point, I think I would pick him up at 3.30 a.m. And he would wait outside right in front of his tree with his tackle box and his fishing poles. Fishing poles weren't as good as mine, but they're okay. <laughs> so one morning, and uh, those of you that know me know I'm never late. I'm like, if I'm 10 minutes early, I feel like I'm late. So I'm sleeping, Meredith, my wife back there, raise your hand, Meredith, Ordero remembers this. Um, we get a call at 4 a.m. in the morning, and Orde Ordell asks Meredith, is Tim okay? Um, is he coming? And I wake up, and I said some bad words. I jumped in my van, so now I get to Ordell's and, and Art's house, and they're praying, they're, they're going to pray for me and Art driving down. So I pick Art up. I said, be quiet, close your eyes. We're going to get there. The boat, we had to be there at 5 o'clock a.m., and I left his house at 4.15. So we're driving down uh, Tyler, and he said, you gonna pray? I said, no, I'm too doggone busy. You pray and be quiet. So Art prays, we get to, like we get to, um, I remember the 2.40, we went to 55, and I tell him, I said, are you gonna sleep the whole way? He said, and then he told me, he said, you told me to be quiet and keep my eyes closed. And I said, no. I didn't re really mean that. So we get, on the, we get on the boat that day, and it started out a little bit slow. So all of a sudden, there's like 50 people on the boat. I'm on the back, Art's on the right side. And I hear him, he always yells at me when he needs help. For some reason, every fishing trip we went on, Art would catch the first and the biggest fish, almost consistent, consistently. So he says, Tim, get over here. <laughs> and grab, I'm not going to say exactly, <laughs> get over here and grab my pole. I said, I'm fishing myself, Art. I'm not going to grab your pole. So he starts yelling at me. So I throw my pole down. I go over there, and he has, 
I'm fighting this fish for three minutes, or excuse me, 23 minutes. And so the fish is coming to the surface and they're getting ready to gaff it. Art elbows me in my ribs and he says, that's my fish, takes the pole back and gets the fish on the boat. <laughs> and that's an honest to God story. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy. So there was, a, there was another time, I'm gonna try to make this as correct as I can. My wife said, tell all the good stories. I said, okay. Uh, we were on a boat in San Diego, and it was a four-day boat. We, we left the harbor at uh, 5 a.m. So we drove all the way down there, and it was, like, it was like probably seven years ago. And we got into a school of, of uh, yellowfin tuna, and Art and I are on fire. We're reeling in fish left and right, left and right. I mean, and we're the only ones. And we're the ones which are using 20-pound test line. So I'm out there fighting my fish somewhere, and I hear Art say, I'm going to punch you in the face. And I turn around, and Art's talking to this guy. And something had happened, right? So immediately, what do I do? I drop my stuff, I run back there, right? And I said, Art, are you getting in trouble again? Because you know, Art and I had this unique experience on boats where we always got into trouble sometimes. <laughs> I don't know why, but he would say something, and I would, you know, if. I was his backup. I was his bouncer on the boat all the time. So he says something. I said, I need to talk to you right now. So he reeled his fish in. We went up into the galley. I said, listen, man. I said, when we get on these boats, you got to calm down a little bit because I don't want to have to defend you all the time. So he said, you don't know what he said about you. I said, I don't care. Then he told me what they said about me. I said, say that stuff all you want, Art. And the funny thing is that gentleman became one of our friends on the next six trips we went on, the same guy was sitting there helping Art and I fish the whole time. Last thing, I have much more stories. Keep on. But one thing about Art is that, you know, with him, he could catch one big fish, then he was done. Then the acid would bit up in his stomach. And I always say, man, why are you gonna, you're not gonna eat one of these venison or elk burgers I bring you? He said, no, they're, they're not very good anyway. I was like, whatever. So he would sit in the back and he would, take his time and find the person that needed the help the most. He would help them tie their hooks. He would help them. He wouldn't reel their fish in, but he would give them lessons. It was an amazing experience. And I have so many warm feelings for him. One, because he could handle my personality, as some of you do know, which is great. He didn't back down from me, and he stood strong. And Art told me he loved me. And, uh, yeah, right. <clears throat> and I loved him too. I never worried. I never worried until I saw them. I never worried until they drove in the driveway. Whatever time of the night it was, they got there. I knew he was safe. Yeah. Thank you, Ardell. I love you. All right. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. All right. Next up, I think we're going to hear from Keith. Is it? Tap? Yep. There we go. I'm going to start out by saying something about the person who was just up here before me. My brother in God, Tim, my friend. Did you notice he had a bandage on a specific finger? <laughs> he, he told me it was about a tire. I'm now thinking it had to do with a fishing boat. I just <laughs> want to say that. I consider myself greatly blessed that I got to know Art Leiser, to be his friend. Each person here has something that connects them with Art. For Art and I, it was a love of World War II history. I would come to church, and pastor don't listen, any of the pastors, 
There were days I would get in, I'd see Art, we'd start talking about something from World War II, and I never got in this sanctuary at all. But Art could tell a story, pass along knowledge, and at the same time make you feel special. And that's a gift in this world. And Art had a gift for connecting with people. And hey, if he thought you were doing the wrong thing, he'd let you know. And there was no confusing whether he was letting you know or not. But Art was a godly man who helped as many people as he could and connected with everyone he could find to connect with. And I know for myself, my life is better for having known Art Lizer. God bless you. Thank you, Keith. Is anyone else? Okay, uh, Jeff, if you make that way. Thank you, all right. Let us know who you are and how you know Art. Anita. I knew Art from being at this church but what brings back lots of memories is we used to do the eighth grade trip at the school over here, and he was the camp cook. And um, there was a teacher, Mr. Seavers, over here, and I was the female chaperone. And it was amazing to see him, be the kids, the respect for him. They were, we'd go on our hikes, but they would always be looking forward to sitting at the campfire with Art and he'd tell stories. And those kids looked forward to him every time. We, he was just amazing, his connection with anybody and everybody. And I was blessed to have that time with him. Thank you, Anita. All right, Manny, go ahead. Yeah. Come Hi, on. my name is Bob Muir. And I know Art from like eighth grade or before, I can't remember. I remember out here in the ball field when this guy would get up, this little short, strong guy had muscles. Uh, he'd do great things on the ball field when I was a kid. And uh, I'm 66 now, so it's been a while. But I've been in Art's class the last couple of years. Get to hear his little stories of what's happened in his life and all. and. Uh, a lot of you probably don't know some of the things, but this guy had a paper route as a kid, got his legs strong, and for 100 yards, he became the fastest high schooler, I think it was, in, in the Long Beach area, or Southern California, I don't know, it was pretty much. He said, don't, don't push me much past 100 yards, though, but he could really go. Most people don't know about that. And his music, he... He was quite a musician. He got played to, I mean, paid to be in a this little band with his string instruments. And I asked him a few months before COVID started, I said, what about your music? He goes, my hearing went bad. I don't have an ear for it anymore. So he had to lay that aside. Like somebody said, he's tried a lot of things in life and some things work for you for a while and then they, then they give up. What I was real impressed with was his love for organic chemistry. A lot of people start college and, oh, I gotta take organic. He just loved organic chemistry. He just ate it up and he figured out some neat little formulas and he was able to give Loma Linda Foods the uh, recipe for Natina and uh, didn't get a dime for it, but kind of figured out the ingredients and, and uh, I think he should get paid uh, something for all that uh, that they, <laughs> no matter how we feel about Natina, he should, he should get paid, yeah. Um, I, I got to hear more about his uh, occupation with the Indians. And uh, it, it takes a special person sometimes to get a certain job. And he only got that job because he was multi-talented. And uh, three of the things were that he was a businessman. He had the chemistry, I think a degree, anyway, it was the scholastic part that he had and and his uh, cooking skills. So the three together worked together and he got a job that 
kept the family going all these years. And, uh, you know, that's amazing. When I was uh, 22, um, he was walking over to the Sabbath school rooms over there to teach the juniors. And I see him walking by himself, and he says later in his little class back here, he learned more from them than he thinks he taught them. But uh, he was always putting out, being on school church boards, you know, working like crazy, just staying involved, you know, doing stuff. And uh, the, what was I going to say? Well, that's, that's about it, but um, he, he, he's always put himself out, teaching a class the last few years, you know, so I take my hat off to him, and uh, I've loved the family, and thank you, everybody. Hope I gave you guys a few insights into Art's life. Thank you. Go ahead, Chuck. Uh, my name is Chuck Elkins, and... Uh, I don't know, to go all the way back with all the stories with Art. Probably the first time I interacted with Art, my, uh, my daughters were in the school across the way. And uh, there was uh, an issue about the billing. And uh, something that I had been sent wasn't correct. And it had to do with whether I had made a payment or not. And I was kind of hoping what I had sent was correct because it meant I didn't owe some money that probably deep down I really knew I did. And Art uh, informed me otherwise. And did it, of course, in, in, a, in a gentlemanly and, and kind and Christian manner. My most recent memories of Art would have been in our Sabbath school class. We did the quarterly, even though sometimes it seemed to Art and sometimes myself were somewhat at odds with some of the doctrines presented in the way they were presented. We still, we did the quarterly. And Art told his stories. And from time to time, the stories kind of took over the lesson. And one of us, Tommy, Marshall, or myself, would try and figure out a way to steer Art back to the lesson. <laughs> Sometimes we were successful and Sometimes we weren't. Art and I had one thing in common. We were both amazed at how good God was to us. And we shared a question. How do we repay him? What do we owe him in return? Thank you, Chuck. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Afuya um, Kumalo, and I am the nutrition director with Indian Health. Um, my journey with Indian Health started about 20 years ago, which lands us with when Art Lizer was the nutrition director with Indian Health. Um, just wanted to share a quick memory. I remember um, when I was... I graduated from Loma Linda. I remember I was going through something at the time and I was having trouble completing interviews. And so I would, you know, make appointments for interviews and I'd get all dressed up and I'd go and sit in the lobby until it was almost my turn and then I would run out the door. <laughs> and um, I remember this particular interview, I was like, okay, it's Indian Health, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna actually complete the interview. And this particular time, a friend of mine um, drove me to the interview and dropped me off, so I couldn't leave. <laughs> so I went in, I remember it was at uh, the Commodities Warehouse, and I, I went in there and, hi, I'm Art Lizer, you know, he talked to me and he was so kind, you know, and he asked me, maybe three questions. The interview was about an hour and a half. And those three questions last about five minutes. And the rest of the time he talked about his trains. <laughs> and I, 
I, I, I left my nervousness behind and I was just like, man, this guy really loves trains. And, <laughs> um, and I kept thinking, what is he thinking? Am I, you know, am I even eligible for the job? Maybe he canceled me out a long time ago. And, and, and then, you know, it seemed like the interview was over and he said, oh, by the way, can you start on uh, a Monday or is Friday better for you or what? And, and I was just like, um, any day is fine. And, and that was it. I, I became the new dietitian with Indian Health and um, I learned a lot from Art. And I think we only worked together for two or three years um, before he retired. But he took me under his wing. Um, he would spend time, he would make me late to work a lot actually because I would stop by commods to do something or pick up something and then he'd, you know, be telling me about the trains and stuff. Um, and I'm like, Art, I have, I have a patient, I gotta, I gotta go. But he was, he was a very warm person. I owe a lot to Art. We all do, I'm gonna ask Karen to join me, she's gonna kill me later. Um, but um, Karen knew Art from her inception um, with Indian Health. I'll let her tell a little bit about that, but all of the programs that we have, that Art started um, with Indian Health, all the grant programs are still in place and they are still taking care of people today because of what Art did. He made that framework happen. He made my life a lot easier and we are indebted to so much that he did what a great man he was, Christian man, a giving man, a very, very good man, and grateful to have known him, honored. Uh, couldn't, I couldn't say it better. <laughs> I'm not a good speaker, so that's why she said I'm going to kill her later. She's going to kill me. But um, I met Art at a bad time in my life, too, and he gave me a chance. And he hired me, and I had nothing and knew nothing. And he taught me a lot, and I'm still there. I'm still there today doing everything that he taught me. Um, I met him, though, when I was a younger girl in grade school, and he started doing cooking classes on the reservation. And my grandmother took me, and she said, come on, let's go learn how to make bread. They have a new guy out here. He's teaching us how to cook. So that's where I first met Art when I was in grade school. But um, he came, and um, I just want to praise God for him coming out there, having that vision for nutrition, um, for the cooking, for the commodities, for the WIC, uh, for all that he had, and for meeting him in everything that he taught me. All right, we have another story over here on this side. Um, I'm David here. I originally met Art when, when, while he was greeting right over there, but then I got to know him more personally because of Bob, and I started going to his class. Um, and I really liked when he would, when we would be walking into church, I would really enjoy seeing him there and getting our bulletins from him or Ardell and it was he made Sabbaths a little more fun and when we when I went to the quarterly study um one of the harder parts of teaching the quarterly study would be turning the conversation away from his uh, stories and back to the lesson. And he let me teach the quarterly study like one or two times. And I just really, I really loved art. To add to what my son just said is that Art welcomed this preteen into his very much adult Bible study and didn't treat him like it was some child in the class. He treated him like he was just another member of the class. It welcomed him and even gave him an opportunity to try teaching and constantly would tell me how he was just such a part of the conversation and such a part of the class. 
he really didn't see that difference in age there. He just saw somebody that was willing to learn from him and to study with him. All right, looks like Paul has his hand up. Hey, you guys, I'm Paul. Um, hey, Paul. Uh, some kind of a, uh, uh, I grew up on a television set and uh, watched a lot of cowboys and Indians. And I kind of always thought that the Indians got a raw deal, you know? And uh, anyways, I, I was going to the quarterly for a while and heard Art talking about some of the things that he had done up in Farmingdale or Farmington, someplace up in New Mexico. Uh, <coughs> anyways, and he just talked about how he used to stand up to some of the big shots so he could get what those people needed. And uh, I don't know, I just thought that that was cool. And I, I really appreciated that there was somebody in their corner. <laughs> I don't feel like I don't, I, I, I have anything to, you know, uh, to offer in that in that space anyways but I was just glad to know him and uh wish I got to go fishing um but anyways uh that's history uh but anyways I was grateful that, that I got to know Art even though sometimes he was a little scary to me and uh he, he he's really, was really kind of short too but uh anyway he's a pretty big pretty big man in my my yeah. my life thanks thank you very much Paul for sharing Oh, Bob has uh, a, a reprise. I, I wasn't reading my notes good. Uh, yeah, the, the punchline that I was going to say was that was kind of brought up here. He went to bat for the Indians, and he says, you either give them the health care that's in their treaty. He read the treaty, I guess. Either you give them that or you give them their land back, and he got things switched, so they got health care after that. And I, I said something about a paper route. My dad had a paper route and became a good runner, but I think Art just rode up Telegraph Hill every day. I think that's what gave him the strength to be the fast runner. Just had to amend that. Thank you. Yes, and uh, I remember racing against uh, uh, Barry way back in high school, Art's uh, third child, and um, Barry was fast. <laughs> Barry was fast, short but fast. Miss running against him. Next. Okay, well, going back to Academy. Um, yeah, my first conscious memory of art was probably the Senior River trip. And, oh, and if you don't recognize me, I'm Dave Roof. So, um, actually, I probably met him earlier because it turns out that my mom and him worked together back before Versatron became Versatron, he was part of the VI family. So, um, so, and I know my mom always had uh, positive things to say um, during that time when he was working with the Indians. For some reason on our senior river trip, I, don't, I didn't get to be on the boat, man. Maybe I would have turned out to be able to ski if I had, but... Um, I remember Tracy going, being a little bit embarrassed by something he did, and after hearing some of these stories, um, you know, maybe she had some reason. But um, after that, just maybe two or three times in the ages between Academy and where we are when the Korean church came to this campus, I just run into Art and Odell um, in the in stores, which is kind of odd because we don't live that close together. Um, but I would see them and know them and ask how the kids were. So then when I came here, the first time that the Korean church came here, and I'm with the Korean church, the English ministry part, um, I went in the first time that we came over, we had the, the Sabbath school combined with arts, and I walk in and providentially the only seat there is right next to art. So I sit down, I know who he is, but he didn't know who I was at this point. And so I, you know, he had us go around, say our names, and all of a sudden he's, Roof, oh, I worked with your mom. And I, 
<laughs> and so, you know, that was just, that kicked it off. And so since then, I've just enjoyed having, uh, you know, the talks that I've had with him here. Um, you know, I know that one time he told me, uh, even if he didn't get to talk to me, you know, he just enjoyed seeing me here and that, you know, really felt a certain level of belonging. And, and I know that he celebrated being honorary, but, um, you know, I think he's mellowed over the years and I really, uh, I, I love Ordell. I'm not quite sure how I am have been mispronouncing it, but. Um, as long as it's said in love, it's pronounced correctly. So, um, I just, I was, when, when Bob told me that he had, had uh, died, I was just really saddened. And, um, but I know that, <coughs> um, as the one quote, uh, the third angel's message, the end of that is, blessed are they who sleep in the Lord and their labor follows them. And I know that, that I truly believe, those who know me know that I believe we're extremely close to the end. And I think that his ministry has followed and will continue to serve until Jesus comes. Amen. Thank you, David. All right, we have another story over there. I hope you're still thinking. I'm, I'm looking around the room. I'm not trying to pick on people. but uh, Yeah, yes. you're, you're running out of people, so I figured I'd come up. I'm here. not running out of people. There's <laughs> not everybody spoken yet, so we're good. All right. Well, my name is Mike Salva. Um, as far as when I first started coming to church, to be honest, I really don't remember. Um, and the actual first time I met Art, kind of hazy. But... but um, being here, I ended up becoming the deacon of the church. Um, uh, I, I was here a lot. I spent a lot of time here, so I got to personally art, know art pretty good. As far as the stories, I don't think we have time to go through all of them. But um, give us a taste, man. <laughs> give us a taste. <laughs> um, oh, story, story. Okay. Well, the one thing I'm always going to remember about art, the one thing I will never forget, I am a meat eater. I like my meat. The first time I tasted Art's almond patties, I fell in love with the veggie patty. It was amazing. I will never forget that. And every time we had a, a, a Pot the, the potlucks, yeah. I was hoping Art would bring those. You know, it, it's something I will never forget. I managed to finally get the recipe from him. It took a while, because Art always had a lot on his mind. And I finally got it from him, so I have that at home, but that, that is, that is probably the one thing I will really remember about art. Um, the other thing is, is God does things for reasons. Um, I never saw myself being in a church family the way that, that, that it ended up. Um, God had, had put art in my path. We crossed roads and it, with him and Ordell, the blessing in my life, just like a lot of you guys here. Um, art was very special. Art was uh, stubborn. Um, <laughs> now, everybody could talk about how short he was. He wasn't short. We saw eye to eye. Great guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Pastor Todd? Yeah, let's go. So I got to understand art a very specific way. You know, Ordell, you know this. Um, and we all know that Art had that side where you just knew where he stood on so many things. And people perceived Art in various ways. One of those was that he's a very strong lion. You know, he just, he had his bite and he had his roar and, and you knew it. But the thing that you have to know about Art is what you have to know about lions and that is that inside of every single one of them is a pussycat. There's something very gentle down in there that is just full of love. And Ordell, I knew you drew that out of him, but it's also how you connected, because you're all that. <laughs> but I came to know art that way. And uh, I can tell a little story to that, and you know this, but I don't think you know that I know this. And that is that when I went to seminary, 
I knew I would not be able to study and continue to work here full time at the same time. It would be too much. And so I needed to cut back to part time. I focused on the youth ministry and I was focusing on my studies. But I had told God, I'm only going to register for classes as I have the money for it. And uh, wasn't spreading it around that money was really tight, but you and Art figured that out. And that was Art's ability to just look into somebody's life and see the need without hearing it and meet that need. So I took a summer class, and the first real quarter, I went to register, and it was kind of the last money that I had, and I was already thinking, I don't know how I'm going to pay for next quarter. And when I went to pay for it, I logged on, registered for my classes, went to the pay page, and there was a credit on my account for $3,500, which was the exact amount of those classes. And I called the financial aid department and said, I really don't want to tell you this, but I think a mistake has happened. There's 3,500 bucks on my account. And they said, no, that's correct. And I said, can I talk to the director? Because I'm concerned that some other student is missing out on some money. Um, I didn't put any money in there and talked to the director. And I said, could you research this a little bit? And they said, we're pretty sure this is from an anonymous donor. I said, could you contact that person? And he called me back about a week later and he said, well, we spoke to the donor and they were pretty adamant. <laughs> Talk to the donor, and they were pretty adamant <laughs> that this was for you, and they wanted it in your account, and that was that. <laughs> I should have been able to put it together, but I didn't. I was so blown away that I was just thanking God for this because that meant for sure I could do that quarter and the next one. When I went to register for the next quarter, there was another credit for $3,000 in my account. And I broke down in tears, and I was just so grateful to God and gr so grateful to the two of you. And week after week after week, I would come to church and be grateful to be here and had no idea where the money came from. I got all the way through school. You and Art give without expecting to receive. And that's the heart of Christ. And I just came to love your husband in so many ways. But I got to see inside of his heart. Only years later did I find out that you two were the ones behind it. And I'm deeply grateful. It changed my life. It stirred my faith at a time when I really was putting my trust in God, and I saw God meet that need through the two of you. And as much as he could bite, he had that soft side that would just draw people in and care about them. And he didn't care about anything else. He just wanted to meet the need and love them for Christ. And I believe that's why so many people were touched by him. Thank you so much for you two sharing your lives with the rest of us. Thank you, Pastor Tom. Anybody else have a story they would like to share? Yes. Um, my name's uh, Talolo. And um, I'm a member here at the church. And Ordell, Art and I have had a lot of long conversations. Um, a lot of it had to do with the history of the church in particular as well. Um, a couple of stories I just was reminded of and I wanted to share is, um, this is sort of a funny one to me, is, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but we have an ice machine that's in uh, the fellowship hall. And... Um, I believe, I hope I remember these correctly, but Art and Ordell purchased that ice machine for, for the church here. And he uh, said to me that I bought, he was, he was, I remember the context of the story, but he seemed a bit frustrated. He's like, you know, I put all this money in this ice machine. No one's ever using this ice. And, and so <laughs> every time now that I go into that ice machine and I pull ice out of it, I think of Art. Every time I go to the beach, I'm thinking, hmm, I need some ice. Should I go to Costco or run by the church and help take some of that ice out of Art's ice machine? So every time I need to fill my ice Amen. chest, thank you, Art. <laughs> I'm filling my ice chest with your ice because it's, so it's going to good use. Um, uh, we've, we've done lots of... Um, um, activities, you know, Beach Vespers in the recent years for the church here, and, you know, and, uh, you know, so we've, we've 
done the, we've used the eyes pretty well, I think. Um, but some more serious, uh, no, serious story is when I first met Art, uh, he, he had shared with me um, that his work that he'd done with uh, the American, Native American population um, here locally and, and really um, in multiple states. And, um, and then he, he was sharing with me his involvement with something called the WIC program. If you guys know what the WIC, have you heard of the WIC program before? And um, if not, this is actually a nationwide program. Um, I'm a social worker um, by profession. I've been a social worker for over 20 years. And at first I thought Art was pulling my leg. I thought he was just, I was like, wow, how, really? You had done all this? And, and by the way, if any of you who are interested, there is a table over here that shows some of that history of his involvement with the WIC program. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't realize that I actually had met Art years and years and years ago before I actually met Art. Um, professionally, as a social worker. Um, and I just wanted, just to make sure that this is known to, to his family, um, anyone who watches these recordings um, in the years to come, the legacy that he leaves behind Really think about it. I mean, you've heard so many. We've heard so many wonderful stories today, but the countless families that he's impacted because of what who because he loves others. What he did, the part of his his role that he played in that program um, being established um, here and then nationwide. I don't know if that program will ever disappear. Um, and there have been countless families that I have been privileged to be a part of to connect them to this program as a social worker. And um, I don't know if we would really ever know the impact that Art's life and his love has had on, how, uh, on this countless number of people out there, um, not just through what he's done here at the church and what he's done here in the community, but that has extended beyond to part of, and I just kind of feel honored in a way, just being a part of teaching next, the next generation to use these kind of resources, you know, that arts, that arts was a huge part of. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to say thank you, Art, and I want to make sure that his family knows that, you know, it, go, it goes beyond just Riverside Community Church, it really does. And he was an amazing, amazing man throughout his life. Thank you, Tilo. Does anybody else have a story they'd like to share? Come ahead. Well, thank you, Ardell, for being you. My name is Lundy. I haven't been to church since February, and it's a blessing to see each of you. I would just like to point out something. Art and Ordell are like a gateway drug. Yes, it doesn't work for all of you, but it worked for me. A dozen years or so ago, my wife and I were looking for a church family, but since it was always us choosing, we sent my son out, and he says, Dad, you got to come to RCC. This is a great church. And they've got this opinionated old guy that reminds me of you. I, well, I was sold. I had to come and meet this guy. So I come to church, and sure enough, he is opinionated. And I agreed with a lot of his opinions. We just clicked right from the very beginning. And that first Sabbath, it wasn't the big potluck Sabbath. Art and Ordell at that time would invite people to their home. And we were blessed to go to a potluck at their home. And my son, of course, he's 17, 18 years old, and he saw all the trains. That just sold him. My wife, who's tiny, Ordell came over and gave her a gentle hug. And that sold her. And 
Art told stories, as he's wont to do. And I hear these stories. It turns out, when I had first moved to America in 1970, and there was the great flood of Loma Linda, do you remember that? Our neighborhood was flooding, and there was this line of men, I remember, stacking sandbags on the wash, and that was Art. Art was out there, so even as a child, I didn't know him. He was out there protecting my home. It flooded, but just a little bit, because guys like Art were out there. And then I find out more of these stories, how entwined he is with this church intrinsically. They've gone back even before this church was built. And then I fall in love not just with Art Nordell, but each of you. Each of you is a story brought about because of Art and Ordell. The gentle hugs, the discussions, the invitations. Folks, each of us could go on. I've only known him a dozen years. Many of you go back decades, a lifetime. And if the story is not clear to you, here's the punctuation on Art's life. Be like Art. Be selfless. Be serving. And if it means pushing a point across, be cantankerous in a godly way. And remember to give somebody a gentle hug and a strong handshake and invite them and become part of a bigger family. Thank you for each of you being here. Thank you for Art. Thank you, Ardell. Thank you, Lindy. Anyone else? All right. Della? Hello everyone, thank you so very much for joining us this evening, this afternoon for the celebration of Arthur Murray Lizer. Man, there's a lot of R's in his name. And we have a game for you to play a little later on your own time. Take his name, Arthur Murray Lizer, and come up with your own words with each one of his initial in his name. So, those R's, there's a lot of them. I tried it already. So. Thank you for your stories. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for loving art. And um, I'm here to, on behalf of all of our family, just, uh, just, just, I can't say enough for the overwhelming love that you have showed him. And I have this long list of stories. And I have to read them all because I'll forget them all. But we're not going to take all night to do this because for those of you who watch YouTube, there is someone called the History Guy who is capable of sharing moments of history that deserve to be remembered in 10 minutes or less. So Paul's going to help me here as I pass this stuff on. But many of you have already shared the trivia and the stories that I would have brought to you had you not bring them up. But um, here's a few more little tidbits, and then we're going to send you on your way. So first of all, food and nutrition. You all know Art shared his love for you and for people through food. He started his career at the La Sierra College, went on to the Loma Linda Food Factory. You heard those contributions, followed by over 40 years in food and nutrition. Some things he did not cook for himself, the grinder style sandwiches and seized candy. So um, as you leave tonight, we have a few mementos and tokens to take with you because some things do deserve to be remembered. They'll be in the back tables back there. So um, do help yourself. The recipe for the pecan patties is there. The seized candy is there. So um, I did hear he did keep a copy of that, seas or that pecan patty recipe in his Bible for you all. So some of those copies back there came from his Bible. So if you get one with special grime on it, you're, you're really treasured. So 
um, gardens in our home, Art created massive gardens at the family home. And we have uh, lots of stories to tell. We're not going to tell all those stories tonight because, um, you know, but we as family growing up were eating oversized squash. Everything was too big, too much. It's just uh, part of our, um, let's say, contributions to the family chickens. <laughs> then he was fondly remembered by our extended family and perhaps you for making gravy. So, um, you know, he lit up with a big smile every time he joined a family and he wasn't responsible for actually cooking the meal, which was very hard for him. He had to make the gravy. So, music. Some of you heard he was a musician. Art played in a band, a paid band, with him and his bandmates in the 50s, and his passion was Dixieland and jazz. So um, we have a very treasured photo over here on the family table of Art and his band with one of the um, club um, paraphernalia, the, the club advertisements. So he was amazing with his music. He played the trumpet, the violin, the guitar. In this picture, you'll see him playing the drums. Did you know he was a drummer? So photography, we have thousands and thousands of family pictures and um, I don't know if we'll ever get through them all, but um, you know, you're more than welcome to help me scan through those pictures someday. Fish, boats, water, art, I think was born a fish and reincarnated as a human. But um, fishing brought him peace, happiness, and relationships with all of you. Um, there's always been boats in our yard. Anything from canoes to, to ski boats to fishing boats. And we had a Zodiac in the yard for a while. Then, um, as you guys know, he might have been a little more patient with you with the water skiing events. <laughs> we children got three attempts to get up on that ski, whether it was double or single or whatever. And if you didn't make it up, you were out of there with some very strong opinionated words. So <laughs> for those of you who learned to ski without those words, I am honored. <laughs> so Art always wore black or white crew socks with sandals. I have that need. <laughs> so <laughs> you can honor Art by wearing crew socks with sandals. Vacations, weeks every year were devoted to fishing trips and significant adventures. The Sierras, Alaska, Canada, North Carolina, Hawaii, Mexico, South America, Montana, Colorado, the outdoors. He gave his children that love for the outdoors and all things water. We all need water. We just love our water. Hats. Art collected hats. We have hats all over the house, from vendors, from vacations, from sports clubs. And he often expressed his opinion through hats. So you may have to read some of the hats on the tables. You've all heard about the trains. Um, but did you really know Art's great, great grandparents immigrated from Bavaria, and the Rheinplatz area of Germany, and, in, and we have family from Switzerland is also, also. Trains provided transportation, careers, and brought the Leiser, the Meissenheimer, the Hummels, all of these German immigrants to California in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So the replicas of Art train railroad were often specifically meant to represent his family, his experiences, his adventures. So he would spend hours handcrafting and building and even cutting trains in half to, to build up the engines and the cars and things that were significant to him and his life in history. 
and you heard about the World Wars two stories. He was very fascinated and his family. So um, history was very, very important. Um, to over here on the table, specific ones, you will see the Lizer family box factory, a hotel, two hotels from his grandmother, he, great grandmother that he owned, they owned in Banning and National City. And of course, that famous Seas Candy. So time, you all know he was obsessed with time. Clocks, working, not working, were everywhere in the house. We, as children, somebody said five minutes, 10 minutes. We were expected on time was 30 minutes before the time. And there were very harsh words <laughs> and opinions if we were not in that car waiting to go to be here 30 minutes early. So that meant an hour for us as kids. So remember, time is important. And that leads us to games. We heard games, card games, all kinds of games. Um, and we heard he was a little cantankerous and a rowdy person. Um, Art's grandmother taught him a version of solitaire to keep rowdy, troublesome little boys out of trouble. And we have copies of that game of solitaire, as well as the pecan patty recipe for everyone to uh, take with you. But um, we want to warn you, this game was created for to keep you busy, to keep you occupied. Because if you all know, if Art wasn't busy, he was lights out. So wherever he was, if he wasn't doing something and not engaged with you or with something else, it was night-night time. So um, his grandma was very wise. This version of solitaire will take you one hour per game. It involves eye-hand coordination. It involves counting, math, and scorekeeping. So we really, you know, would like you to understand that. And that was part of what kept art, you know, learning and growing and occupied and gave him patience. This version of solitaire, grandma also called patience. And as you heard, he was salty, he was stubborn, but he left lasting impressions to all of us, his family, um, his us growing up may have had a little saltier version of art than you might have had. Um, and, um, but he brought to us, he gave us his, our work ethic, our compassion, our love for people, for nature, for all, all the things that we actually are today as his children. And, and his connection and his history does deserve to be remembered. So thank you all so very much for joining us tonight. And thank you this Thanksgiving season. Thanksgiving was his favorite holiday. And we really appreciate you joining us. All right. Thank you, Della. Yes, indeed. Thank you. All right. Wow, what a special day. I, I know we haven't heard all the stories, so I hope you will take some time and uh, touch base with Ordell uh, directly. I want to encourage you, if you haven't had a chance so far, to take a moment and look and see some of the hats and some of the memorabilia uh, that uh, we have to, uh, as part of the picture we have of art. I hope that you will take a moment uh, to do that. At this time, I would like to invite Betty Blue to come. I'm, I'm going to get a, a wipe for the microphone in just a second, Betty. I was so pleased when I heard Betty was going to be here so that she could come and bless us with a prayer. And after, after Betty prays, you're going to hear the Battle Hymn of Republic played uh, so that you will hear, again, one of those bands that Art really enjoyed. So feel free to listen and, and, and meander. There's still koi fish if you want to see what they look like in the fountain and, and uh, say hi to the family. Thank you much for being here today. 
My name is Betty Blue, and I just am so thankful to get to see so many of you. I just love all of you. And I can't remember the time I didn't even know the Lizers. Uh, my daughter Kathy, who's with me, and Tracy were best friends in high school, and they, oh, they were not, they were inseparable. So anyway, I've known them for a long time and love them. Shall we bow our heads? Dear Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for all this group of friends that have gathered here today in memory of Art Lizer. His life, his service, his friendship, how much he's meant to the Riverside Church. And Lord, I'm, I'm praying right now for Ordell and the children, Della and Tracy and David. I ask you to give them comfort and peace in this time of transition. And Lord, then I think of when we reach that great white throne and are encircled around the tree of life where there's no death and dying. I ask for comfort until that time, for we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.